Simply to let him know that you came out to give him the glory. Is there anybody here that came out to give him the praise? Come on, come on. You got up this morning. You came to church, so you might as well have church. Is there anybody here that came to have church on today? Lift this up on today. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. There we go. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. You say, I love you forever.
是说
if you didn't hug five people, you a hater. <laughs> so I hope you hugged five people. Amen. It is so good to see Mother Halliburton back. Amen. And Mother Cole and Deacon Cole. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. Amen. We miss you all. We miss you all. We miss you all. And your presence is felt when you're here. I feel you. Amen. Amen. I know it's good to be here. Anybody glad to be here today? Amen. Listen, I want to thank all of you last Sunday for, for traveling with me um, over to Witnessing Code Jig. I apologize for the uh, mix-up, but um, I'm glad that you guys went. It was about 35, 40 of us. And um, if you know, and so we were in the building, and I appreciate that. Um, today we are going to Starlight. I promise you, I'm preaching today. Okay, I promise. So um, if if you all would please come, um, it's for the installation of their officers. Um, Starlight is right over on what, Pennsylvania. Guthrie, right over on Guthrie, amen, across from Hell's Chicken, amen, amen, so if you know where Hell is at, you'll find Starlight, so so please meet us there at 4 o'clock, our choir is going to be singing, and I need you guys, we have a busy month this month, we have a real busy month this month, um, our singles ministry, who has been headed by Minister Iveretta, um, they're going to have their first service here on the 23rd at 4 o'clock. Um, we have invited uh, Pastor Willie Johnson. Um, oh, I forget the name of his church out here in East Chicago. They occupy the with, with mission of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mission of Jesus Christ. They will be our guests uh, for the service. So I'm asking all of us to come. This month is busy. Look at your neighbor and say, this month is busy. Amen. I'm, I'm just excited to get back to get back to church and, and doing what we do. We go to Higher Heights on the 19th. Amen. And I am preaching there also. That's CC's church. Um, I threatened CC. I said, I said, am I preaching? She said, yeah. I said, you sure? She said, yeah. So, so we're, we're preaching there too. So we want you guys to come and be a part of that. Amen. Good morning. How's everyone this morning? Is it on? Okay. Chill, chill. Okay. Okay. We're going to be having 6 a.m. prayer on March 15th, and I encourage everyone to come out to start their day with a morning prayer. You will be blessed, so um, I will be here. So please, everyone, come out and join us. Yeah, that's 6 a.m. prayer off the hook, y'all. We, we just sit there for an hour, and I mean, we just go forth and just cry out to the Lord. I'm telling you, and 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 I'm telling you, if you never experienced it, you should be here. It's, it's just a wonderful thing. I love that. Amen. So that's what's up. We're gone. Amen. We, we're going to bring our choir here. Amen. And I'm just ready to go high. Somebody drop this little plug on my desk. I don't know what this is. Uh, huh? It's what? Oh, okay. Are you for are you for going to be um, going to this church? Yeah, New Hope. They're having this awesome youth fest. I heard about this, so um, you guys will be hearing more about that. All right, come on, look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh, come on, say it with a smile. Y'all brush your teeth this morning. Come on, look at them. Say neighbor. I love you. That you're sitting next to me because if you're sitting next to me, you're sitting next to a blessing. All right, come on. <laughs> Yes. 
bless your name, our Father. All right. You are holy. We give you glory and yeah, we bless your name, our Father. You are holy. You give me glory and yeah, we bless your name, our Father. Your name, our Father. You are holy. We give you glory and 
his glory is just, just come on down for prayer. If you don't wish to come down, stand at your seat. Stand at your seat. situation and you don't see nothing around you to wear it's, it's even worn some things you can't you're working from you working from paycheck to paycheck robbing people to pay for stuff crazy at home hiding your car all kind of stuff going on in your family come on you don't have the money you want you need come on just barely making it but in spite of all of that <laughs> God has still been keeping you. I ain't got no help in here. In spite of all of that, his name is worthy to be praised. Because I guarantee you, even with the situation or the hand that you've been dealt here now, there's somebody that would love to be in your shoes. So you ought to give thanks in all things. Can I hear you begin to just thank our God? Come on, thank him. Come on, begin to thank him. I need y'all who really going through hell to thank him real loud. Come on, I need you to really thank him real loud. Come on, thank him real loud. Come on, somebody, thank him. I need some thankful people in the building. Now begin to give God a praise with your hands. On your way to your seat, just say thank you, God. 
if you're thankful. Hallelujah.
yes, yes, he wins. Amen. He reigns in our situation. He reigns. That means that he's in control over it. Well, that was two of us that got excited. I'm, I'm glad that God is in control over my situation. Do I got some help in here? Am I, am I the only person going through something? Okay, well, y'all better talk back to me. Are you glad that he reigns in your situation? That means you know he's in control. He's in control. Look at somebody and say he's in control. My That's been in my spirit this week. Come on, stand to your feet. Receive the word of God. Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. chapter 17 verses 1 and 2 it says after six days Jesus took with him Peter James and John the brother of James and led them up a high mountain by themselves verse 2 says there he Jesus was transfigured before them his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. I want to talk again from this mountaintop experience series and I want to talk about your mountain of change. Your mountain of change. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. pastor is going to preach about the mountain of change. Come on, you come on, give God a hand of praise right there. You may be seated. The mountain, the mountain of change. This month, God had given me for a, a sermon series entitled this the mountaintop experience and i explained to us monitors a little last week about um how normally when we depict mountains they they are high places and we look at them as a source of achievement because we're always trying to get to mountain tops but but in this series god has given me um a revelation in mountain tops meaning um that they're not just places of achievement, but they really serve as spiritual obstacles that sometimes you can't go around it, sometimes you can't go through it, but you've got to climb to the top of it. And, and so much so, some of the singers used to sing the song, um, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain, but, but give me the strength to climb. Yeah, I don't know what is it. Uh, what, what's the other part of it? I don't want to be a stumbling block, but leave me all around. Y'all ain't got no old folk in here that know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, mountains are obstacles that stand in our way. And can I say to us this morning, brothers and sisters, I don't know what your obstacle is, but everybody has a mountain of something in front of them. Every one of us who are sitting here today, we have to deal with our mountain. Do I got some help in here? And I don't care where you live. I don't care how much money you have or you don't have. It does not matter about your race or ethnicity. It does not matter about your education level. All of us have to experience mountains. God will place mountains in front of us so that it can build up our spiritual stamina so that we can run the race. Because you have to understand that the Bible is clear when it says that the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but it's given to the one who's able to endure. And your endurance is built up through your trial and tribulation. I ain't got no help. It's not built up just when things are happy. We know what God is able to do, but when you really get strong faith and you really uh, get something placed in you to go the extra, extra mile, that's when when you've gone through hell and high water. That's when you've gone in the valley and you didn't see no way out. That's when uh, you've been in the storm and rain and didn't have windshield wipers to help you. That's when you've been in the fire and with no water, no around. That's when you've been down to your last, last, last dime. Uh, you've been in the piggy bank in your daughter's savings account uh, and you still have no way out. That's when you're able to understand that God give me faith uh, and give me endurance to be able to go that extra, extra mile. And I'm looking at some people in here this morning, y'all trying to be all quiet. 
man, and creep through and sedate it. But I'm looking at some people right now who's in, I'm on your street, and you can be a witness to know, say, Robert, I've been there. In fact, I'm there right now. But every time I got there, I know I serve a God who's able to take me out of whatever I'm in. And that's the reason I'm here right now. It's because the God that I serve didn't leave me in there, but he brought me out. Is there anybody up in here that knows that God really bring you out? Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll bring you out here. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. And brothers and sisters, I discovered that when I come out, I did not come out like I went in. I did not come out never learning a lesson, never understanding what I had to go through that situation for, never understanding what I was to learn in that situation. So when I come out, I'm back in the same place again. I ain't got no help in here. So God God is commanding us this morning that listen, I'm going to put you on a mountain of change because when you look around your life right now, you would have to admit there's a lot of things around me that need to change. I ain't got no help in here. I wish I had one person beside me that can admit that there are some things in my life that I need God to change. I'm not satisfied with where I am. I'm not satisfied with what I do. There's some things in my life that all folks used to say it like this. It said, oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. It said, if you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me. Let me stop there. They said, I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. I need you to give somebody a high five and say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to change. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, welcome to the mountaintop of change. Come on, look up, say, F of change, of change. Come on, they say, there's some things in my life that's got to change. And God allowed me to get up on the mountain. I ain't got no help in here. See, see, you sometimes, sometimes you can't even see when things need to change. Because you can be so low in the valley that you can't see what you need to change. But God said, look, I'm bringing you up on the mountain. Look, I ain't going to let you bypass your stuff, but I'm going to let you stand on top of it so you can see how much is under. I ain't got no help in here. So you can see how much stuff is under you that you need to change. Yes. And I'm looking at some of y'all in here today. Y'all looking at me like, Reverend, I'm all good. You don't know my story. The devil is a lie. Oh, Reverend, you don't really know what I'm into. You don't know how much stuff would be under me. But can I tell you, there's some people in here that will have a mountaintop if you could pack your stuff under you. You would have a mountaintop bigger than my Everest. I ain't got no help in here. Oh, don't look at me and say it ain't nothing wrong with you. Look at your neighbor. The Bible said that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So baby, your stuff your stuff's ain't just like mine. It don't smell no sweeter. some stuff on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I got some stuff on me. I, I got some stuff on me. So here in this story, let me hurry. Here in the story, this morning, Jesus is on his way to his death. Jesus is on his way to be crucified. But he takes this sidebar and he takes his three boys, Peter, James, and John, along with him. He says, listen, brothers. He says, I got to go a little further because I have to go up a 
on a mountain so that you can witness something so that you when you give your testimony you'll know that you know so he goes up on this mountain it's called we call it the mountain of transfiguration because Jesus is literally transformed before their eyes if you look at this whole chapter Matthew chapter 17 and read those first 17 verses you will see the story of the transfiguration this word transfigured literally dominates the whole text and what it tells us that right before these guys eyes Jesus was literally transformed or in the Greek it means metamorpho where we got our word metamorphosis you know how a, bird, a caterpillar starts out as a caterpillar and then he goes into a cocoon and scientists say there's a metamorphosis that is changing or that is going on inside of a cocoon and then when he comes out of a cocoon he is nothing like he looked like before he went in I ain't got no help in here he went in ugly yes but he came out something beautiful he went in crawling on his stomach but he came out flying oh I wish I had some help in here I'm looking at some people in here this morning you need to be on your mountain of shame because God is trying to metamorphose you God oh yeah you look at your life and you say look ugly right now you're crawling on your stomach but God said just hold on Transfigures them. He transformed right before their eyes. And the Bible declared in this pericope, in this narrative, that they see Jesus, they, then they see Moses, and then they see Elijah. And the Bible declared that the disciples, the three boys, Peter, James, and John, become afraid. Then the Bible declared that Jesus, Jesus touches them, and he said, Don't be afraid, for it is. I ain't got no help in here. He said, look, even though you know it's me, he said, when we come down off of this mountain, don't tell anybody. Because Jesus did not want the word to get out. Because he was on his way to be crucified. I ain't got no help. And he had to die for you and I. And brothers and sisters, just think about all the changes that our Lord and Savior had to go through for our behalf. Just think about everything that he had to face because of us. Oh, he was lying on, torn away from his family. Those who loved him and looked at him and was hurt. People ran away because of him. People were killed because of him. Think about all of the changes he had to go through. And maybe God just a fashion of it from you and you sit here this morning and act like you can't do it but I come to tell you you can do it and the reason I know you can make a change is because of God that we serve he made a change oh yeah you better believe baby that Jesus was God in flesh and he felt everything we felt he was not in spirit all the time but he was in carnal form just like you and I he had his issues just like you, but he always came back to his father and said, Father, if it's possible, y'all making me preach too hard this morning. He said, let this cup pass me back, but not my will, but thy will be done. I'm looking at some folk in this place. Are you ready to make a change? You know your life is not where it should be. You know God got better for you. If you ready to God, 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 you, 
If you're going to make a change on the mountain, I want you to understand that God will confirm his presence on you. Matthew chapter 17 verse 2, it said that he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. God made his presence known right before their very eyes. And can I ask you a question to all of you who are sitting here so quiet and so ditty. Do you know Jesus? Do you really know who he is? Because if you really know who he was, you couldn't sit down and be so cute as to Diddy. I know you educated, but can I tell you, I serve a God who is omniscient. That means he knows all of all. Yes. He knows all and all ain't even all. He still knows it all. So you sit there trying to be so Diddy if you want to, but then there's some of you sitting here acting like, like ain't nothing wrong in your life. Like you got this life by a string. Like ain't nothing wrong. Like ain't nothing going on. You got money stacked on top of stacks. You got Jeez! 
in here. I ain't talking about that church looking sissy side. No. And I'm talking about when God laid his hands on you. I ain't got no hope in this house. And you knew it wasn't nothing but the trouble of the Lord. And I said, y'all, hold on, let me tell you. See, I was brought up in church all my life. And it wasn't not until 14 that I honestly, that I gave my life to God. It was after Sunday morning service. My mother threatened me after church. She said, if you go home on Sunday without going to church, it's going to be a problem. Now, she said she ain't said that, but I remember that. But, but I was sitting on the morning bench, Sister Harper. That's where all the kids sat at. I didn't know what the morning bench meant. I thought it was a place for mom and them to watch us. And so we were sitting on the morning bench. And, and it was a quartet group there. And they start singing this song, and he'll be like a shelter in the time of a storm, he'll see you through, that's what he'll do, and something happened to me at 13, the power of God hit me, I was in church all of that time, and never felt the power like that, I used to sing in the choir all of that, never felt the power like that, but as I sat on that foot rope, tears began to run down my eyes, I couldn't hold my peace, I got up and started singing the song with him, you know I can't song in a minute, but I remember when God laid his hands on me, God. is there anybody in here remember your day, when the Lord laid his hands on me, God. I hear you open up your mouth, and say thank you Lord, yeah, I didn't mean to give you all that, but also if you can sing a song and say he touched me, and the Configuration would do. This is what metamorphosis of change would do. It will show the God in you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to show the God in you. See, when you are transfigured, I mean literally metamorphosis, you cannot be the same way. And you got to come out totally different. You got to have a mindset that say, look, I don't want to be like I used to be. And when I look around this morning, I think all of us are here because at some point in our life, we decided that we don't want to be like we are then. We decided that there has to be a better for us. So you come in church now. You've given your life to God. And now you're trying to work this thing out to really understand what salvation is. And to understand what your purpose is. And while you're waiting, God said, look, there ought to be a transformation in you. You ought to be able, people ought to be able to see something different in you. That's why now when you go out, see people are happy. I want you to understand this. That people are not happy with your success. Even though you're trying to better your life. Even though you're trying to be better than you work. See most people want you hanging out with them like y'all used to. People want y'all come talking on the phone and gossiping like you used to. But see when God transformed you, he said look you gotta do it by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word renew means transformation or metamorphosis of your mind. So you cannot think like you used to think. You cannot have the same ghetto attitude in the church like you had out in the streets. There ought to be a new mindset. In fact, the Bible said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So now, since you are changed, since you are transformed, you shouldn't cuss Negro out as much as you used to. You wouldn't go off as much as you used to. See, there ought to be a transformation. And see, people think it's all or nothing. No, that ain't how God is. God never talks about a sinless perfection in the Bible. We're all on our way to salvation. It's a process. It's a growth thing. We're on our way from glory to glory. We're climbing higher and higher. So you better look at your neighbor just because you still cuss a little bit. Say, mind your own cussing. God 
God is working on me. But I'm looking at somebody right now who knows that you ain't what you used to be. You may not be what you want to be, but thank God you ain't what you used to be. I need you to get somebody outside Say, I thank God, but I'm not like I used to be. Come on, touch somebody and say, I'm better, 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 better. Say, I'm better. Come on, say, I'm better, better, better. Come on, y'all get out of the sedating section. I need you to find the people who watch with lost in sin. But Jesus took a man section. And you know that I'm not good from a letter. Come on in here, preach, rabbit. On your side. You wouldn't be here right now. I dare you uh, to get up out of your seat uh, and be a witness uh, and say if it had not been uh, for the Lord. Monitor. Uh, yeah. Uh, come on, look at somebody and say if it had not been for the Lord, uh, I wouldn't be here right now. Uh, say, I wouldn't be here right now. Uh, God made me a living witness. Uh, Transformation. Uh, I'll make you a living witness. Uh, I ain't got no hope in here. Uh, he told Peter, James, and John, don't tell it. Uh, but they couldn't keep it to themselves. Uh, see, when you're transformed, uh, when you really did change, uh, when God's hand is on your life, uh, you can't keep it to yourself. Uh, you got to run and tell somebody. Uh, you got to let the whole world know uh, that for God I live. And for God I die. When you get transformed, you don't care what a nigga say. You don't care what they talk about. You say, For Christ I live. And for Christ I die. You don't care what the world say. You don't care how they will accept us. But I come to let you know that for me and my house, my spiritual house, my glorified house, we live. Say the Come on, get the leave a high five and say, No, no, if you're only new, won't you be free? Won't be free? I should be out of my mind. 
She can go up there with you. Come on. She's going to be on the prairie scene one day anyway. Come on. Come on. Open your mouth, people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. I'm in love with the Lord. I'm in love with the Lord. Come on, when you stand to your feet. I'm in love with the Lord. How many people are in love with Jesus? You know that love is an action word, right? You know that? So when you do the favor, just tell the Lord I love you. Come on, come on, keep telling, keep telling. song in my spirit. I was singing it all week long, Anthony. I was singing it all week. And I want y'all to hear the words of this song. It talks about his miracle. It talks about his miracle. The water he turned into wine. Give sight to the blind. There's no one like you. And then he goes on to say that our God is real. Our God is strong. God, you are higher than any other. Anybody, does that, does that describe you? And then it's a song that you can just go in and go from home because it really just describes who God really is. Y'all got me? So I want you all to join in with us and do this. Come on, let's do this together. Come on. Every time. Water, you turn into wine. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. I hear y'all saying it. I hear y'all No like you. Say into the darkness. Into the darkness. I the ashes. I the ashes. I the ashes. I the I the ashes. I the ashes. I the I the
is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? If our God is with us, I want to hear y'all say it now. Let me hear y'all say it. Say it. And who? And who can ever Listen, I want you to turn. Turn to I want you to turn to somebody around you and ask them, are you ready to make the change? change. You don't have a church home, first of all, that needs to change. You don't have a pastor that you have a relationship with, that needs to change. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, that needs to change in order for the other change to happen. So first of all, if you're ready to make that change, would you come down? I want you to come out, brother, sister, man, boy, or girl. Step out of the aisle, give me your hand, give God your heart. It's not to make a change. You need a pastor. You need a church home. It's time for you to make that change. We're in the third month of 2014, and let's not go another further like we did last year. Let's make a change. Father, bring your family. Mother, bring your family. Bring yourself. Come now. Step out of the aisle and come now. Come on. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come down. Come down. Well, listen. Maybe everybody saved their house. Everybody got a church home. Amen. Look at somebody and ask them, are you saved? Do you have a church home? Come on. Come on. Look at them. Amen. Amen. I like you to rock. Yeah. Can you say No. Okay. We're well, just going to sit there and rock, though. <laughs> That's good to know your ministry. Amen. So look, if you need to make a change, you got some things in your life you need pastors and ministers to pray for, I want you to come down meet me at this altar. Come on. Hallelujah. Church. Amen. Amen. That young lady is going to take you and get some information. Amen. God bless. Come on and give him a hand. Marlon over there. Acting on the clown today. Marlon is over there. Jam. Then my brother over here. He's doing a miss thing. And little Marlon just holds it down. Hold it down, man. He over there holding it down. 
Listen, I had one more call that I wanted to bring out. I had one more call. You, need, you got some things in your life around you that you know you need to change. The things that need to change. It might be a relationship. It might be the people that's around you. It might be financial stuff. Maybe it's your family members. You know. But if you want us to pray for you, I want you to come and meet us down at this altar. Come on. We want to pray for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to be out of here in a few minutes. Come on. Yeah. We need all of the preachers are coming down to help. Come on. Amen. 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 I need to raise our preachers.
Mother, we're about to go. Is to you. You all watch us. Y'all try me and see how you do it in the city of East Chicago, Indiana. We want you all to sow a seed online right there on our website. It's safe and secure. Amen. So be a blessing to us. Amen. So let's, let's do that. Listen, you all remember. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I probably forgot to tell me. I probably forgot to tell you. The fishing service is supposed to, supposed to be what? Fourth Sunday. I'm moving it to fifth Sunday. Okay? We're going to move it to fifth Sunday. That's our fishing service and, and our $25 seed that, that God asks for us to give above the tithe on that Sunday. That Sunday only. Amen? So let's join in and let's do that. If you ain't got it, don't strip about it. Amen? But if you have it, please join in and let's do a part and let's do this thing together. Amen? Amen. All right, y'all ready to give? Y'all ready to give your best? Yeah. Oh, 
Are you ready to give your best?